Hello YouTubers, welcome to Field Skills. Today's video is part of my Urban Survival Series and we're going to talk about the First Aid Kit. And the First Aid Kit, reminding ourselves that it is a key component to core need number one, which is our health and safety. Being able to take care of our physical needs, physical injuries we may have in a survival situation. When I think about the items that I've selected to go into my first aid kit, my vehicle first aid kit, I use my survival item checklist that I talked about in a previous video. And that survival item checklist for first aid items is broken into four basic categories or subsections in there. Infection prevention items that would go in here to protect me uh, from any infections. Bandages and splints being the second group of items that go in there. Thirdly is medical equipment tools that I may need uh, in administering first aid to an individual. And then fourth is medications that would be a part of treating uh, a patient. In any first aid kit we have to be reminded that there's a strong possibility in a situation we may be the first responder to get on the scene to help someone else or help ourselves in that case and having the items we need with us can be critical to uh, to our protection, our safety and treating ourselves in those situations. When we think about first aid and administering first aid, whether it's to ourselves or someone else that we may be the first responder to reach, we need to remind ourselves of the priorities of first aid, which are the six B's uh, of first aid. And those six B's include, number one, breathing, uh, taking care, making sure a patient is breathing. Number two is bleeding. Thirdly is bones and joints, broken bones, of bones or sprained joints. Fourth is bites and stings. Fifth, burns and abrasions. And sixth is blisters and pains as I have defined these there. And the key is being able to treat these type of injuries, these type of circumstances, and having the knowledge, the skills, and the resources to do that, which is part of our triangle of survivability knowing what you need to do, knowing how to do it, and having what you need to do in a first aid or first responder situation. Okay, breaking down this first aid kit, it's in three different compartments, and those compartments are focused on three different areas of uh, first aid. First of all, there's trauma especially focused on the breathing and the bleeding situations that we may face or run up on out there. Secondly is a compartment of more intermediate type care, less life-threatening but serious injuries, broken bones, the joints, following those pri uh, six B's of first aid priority through that. And then the third is uh, area is minor situations, uh, small cuts, small abrasions, burns, stings, things like that that may require medications more than anything. So breaking it down into trauma care, and intermediate care, and minor skin care in this first aid uh, kit that we've got here. So let's uh, break it down, open it up, and show you what I've got in those three areas. Okay, let's break down my Voodoo Tactical First Aid Kit, and as you can see, I've ordered it in the red, and on the outside, I've got my First Aid cow, uh, Patch, but the red just uh, shows that it is for First Aid, easily uh, able to identify, find it in the car. Uh, if you come up on a wreck and uh, you get out and see there's triage, someone's there, say, go get the red bag in the back of my truck, in the trunk of my car, whatever it may be. So I like having it in red. But let's break it down into the areas. And this bag breaks down into three separate compartments, as you can see here. Now, looking on the outside and talking about our 
uh, trauma situations and our six B's of, uh, uh, of first aid priorities. Number one is breathing. And so as you can see here, I've got a couple of these uh, Rescue First uh, CPR masks uh, that come in the little pouches and I've got them hooked on the zippers here. So if we need to uh, administer CPR mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, uh, this has uh, got some protection, uh, personal protection for me and for the patient that we're working on. And using these mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth CPR uh, involves the triangle of survivability, having skills, knowledge, skills, and resources, knowing how to administer CPR, and being trained the skills on how to administer uh, CPR is important. And uh, it's very easy to go out and get your CPR training. And I highly, re highly recommend that everyone gets that. But I've got that on the outside. Let's begin here then in the back when we talk about my more uh, trauma care part of the pack and that's trauma care is focusing on breathing making sure that person's breathing bleeding breathing and bleeding uh, situation in the top there I've got a small bag with uh, these are latex gloves you could use nitrile and I, I'll probably get me some nitrile gloves uh, as part of that kit uh, part of this kit but uh, having gloves part of my protection and prevention then I've got several different rolls, from athletic tape to the stretchy tape to hospital tape in there. Uh, all for bleeding and hemorrhaging, uh, we start with uh, an extra large compress dressing in there. Of course, having uh, a tourniquet, a good uh, uh, cat type tourniquet uh, is an important part of that. In the back here though, also to stop bleeding, couple gauze rolls, a couple three rolls of gauze uh, in there. All different sizes of gauze pads from 2 by 2s to 4 by 4s to an, uh, an 8 by 10 gauze pad back there uh, in there. But to stop bleeding or hemorrhaging. A couple of Israeli bandages in there, compression type bandages to stop the bleeding. Uh, I also keep just some soothing eye wash as an irrigation, not just for washing out an eye injury, but also be, could be used to wash out wounds uh, in the situation of a trauma. Uh, sea locks uh, in there to stop bleeding uh, and to help clot bleeding through that. Then various iodine, propionine alcohol uh, sticks and treatments for infection for the patient if you get the bleeding stopped. So that goes in the back there. Uh, as part of breaks, bones and joints uh, situation there, I keep a SAM splint in the back. And of course, uh, the tapes can be used to splint a broken bone, a joint, a knee that's been torn out. Also, these can be used for a, uh, a collar, cervical collar, in the case of uh, you may have uh, some surgical damage. I also keep a couple hot uh, hot and cold packs in there. Pain relief patches, cold and hot pain relief medicated pouches. Uh, just stuck in the back of that. Uh, as part of the trauma kit, I keep some sutures. A pack of, uh, I think this is 3-0 self, uh, one, 4 silk, nylon monofilament black silk with the needle in there. Uh, and a face shield, another face shield for uh, uh, doing CPR in there, along with uh, an eye patch in there, uh, in that package. A uh, triangle bandage is in that back pocket here. So that's what is part or considered my trauma kit, and mainly focused on bleeding, but uh, breathing, bleeding, and then certain broken bones with the splint are in this bigger pocket at the back. Uh, as I'm moving forward, let me just mention uh, right here I keep, uh, this is for patient uh, in case of shock, uh, hypothermia. Uh, I keep just an emergency blanket uh, stuck down in there along with uh, part of the tools uh, for that is just some uh, EMT shears 
in there. And then in this part back here, stuck in, I have a stethoscope for uh, finding a pulse, uh, making sure people are breathing uh, in there. Just a, a simple, basic uh, stethoscope in there. So, uh, all right, as I was putting it back in, I did mention this as part of the bones and joints uh, thing is a finger splints with some gauze roll in the tape as part of that. But uh, packing this all back up, and of course I leave right there on the top gloves, the first thing I want to be able to grab in that situation. And close the trauma uh, portion of the kit up more there. Now, moving to my more intermediate care uh, section of the first aid kit, uh, various things we've got in here. Uh, bones and joints, uh, an ace bandage will come in handy. Uh, I've got another triangular bandage. I had one in here. I keep one up there for uh, using as a uh, uh, shoulder harness or a uh, sling. Went blank there for a second. Uh, in there, I've got the little cup that I uh, use for the eye wash saline solution that I've got over here. Uh, coal pack. Uh, Bones, joints, sprained ankle, uh, torn up knee, an ice pack comes in real handy. I had the three inch ace bandage. I've got a two inch ace bandage also in there to be able to use. Uh, uh, some mole skin. This gets down to the blisters, the last of our six B's uh, in there. But uh, to be able, if it's a hiking situation, uh, it's a minor uh, part of first aid, but. Uh, uh, can make it awful comfortable for an individual if we can fix a blister they may have. And another a capsation hot patch uh, that folds up and goes in there. And then one of the keys to it, uh, to anything, uh, is having the right tools. It's part of the resources you need to perform the skills and use the knowledge that you have in a first aid situation. So I've got a small pack here with some some hemostats, some forceps, uh, scissors. Of course, I've got the uh, scissors with my uh, my EMT scissors in there. Uh, I've got uh, uh, tweezers, a couple different kinds of tweezers, some uh, uh, long Q-tips, uh, swab sticks. Uh, and one of the things I want to get to also help with uh, joints and fingers is some tongue depressors to go in here some safety pins to use with the uh, uh, triangular bandages to make the sling. So uh, that goes into more intermediate care, really dealing with bones uh, or, or joints, sprains, strains, things like that that you may uh, want to help uh, a patient with. Let's get that back in there real quick. Skins and my ace bandages. And that's part two. Section three is the minor care uh, situation. And I keep this small, though I like the little this little first aid pouch. I think I got this at Walmart or somewhere. But as part of that, I keep in here some uh, what uh, alcohol wipes, some sanitizing wipes, but uh, bandages. This is the, the small, the minor boo-boos, uh, various band-aid type items in there to uh, treat just the small cuts and all. And you can grab that out and this will be most of the times what you'll use the most out of there is grabbing the, the small things to fix a small cut or scrape through there. What else do we have in here? Uh, some more saline uh, solution can be in there. Here's some extra medicine, a, a small tube of Advil, uh, sanitizing hand wipe uh, wash in there. I keep laying in there uh, a big lighter. It's always good to have that with you somewhere. Uh, and some extra strength uh, pain reliever, acetaminophen is what that is, a tube of that that I have. Back over here I've got some other things, a tooth repair kit I picked up uh, in this bag, instant oral pain relief, uh, uh, 
Burt's Bees Lip Balm. Uh, crazy glue can go back to part of the minor or a more intermediate cut uh, uh, or laceration can be fixed with a little crazy glue. A uh, tube of antibiotic cream and some uh, nighttime eye lubricant. Somebody gets something in the eyes, this can be very helpful to uh, moisten that eye and, and protect it. Uh, we keep, uh, these are the ointments pack, and these are small Ziploc uh, snack packs, uh, but it's insect cream, uh, hydrocortisone creams in here, little burn cream, sunscreen, insect repellent, burn gel, uh, those type of ointment uh, medications that we might need. And then in here is the uh, small uh, individual package. Uh, acetaminophen, ibuprofen, uh, diphen for a uh, die mode, uh, sinus and cold medicine, anti antacids, along with I keep a couple of uh, water purification, aqua aquamira water purification tablets in there. Can be uh, come in useful to uh, purify water. Just have handy there. And then here is the uh, alcohol swabs, uh, quick cleans, uh, antiseptic hand wipes, things like that that you might need, all in this minor care kit. And then I keep in the bottom here uh, a Sharpie. If you use a tourniquet uh, back up here in the, in the trauma kit and you had to put a tourniquet it's always recommended to write the time on the forehead or, or near where it was of the patient of when that tourniquet was put on so that when they reach uh, medical attention at the hospital, the emergency room, they'll know how long that splint has been on. So it's good to have a mark, a sharpie for a lot of different things. A syringe in there for drawing off fluids, if you may be, and then just a tube of Stingies uh, additional there. And uh, these are some more uh, felt pads uh, for blisters. And um, so as you see, this first aid kit is, is not a hospital, but it has a lot of things to treat all of our major first aid priorities. One other thing I wanted to mention here is uh, this big red bag is my long-term kit, and it's my... Uh, storage for things that go in this bag. And I've got just a lot of extra bandages, band-aids, tapes, uh, cold packs, everything that's in here, I've got a duplicate or more in this bag, and it stays at home. Where if we had it, we have a first aid kit, a larger one, uh, there to resupply this bag or uh, to have in a long-term urban survival type situation. First aid kit. Key to having the knowledge, the skills, and the resources you need to be the first responder in a bad situation. Uh, I finish all my videos with a quote. And the quote I'm using for this urban survival series of videos is from Benjamin Franklin. Where Franklin said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. And that's so important in preparing for an urban survival situation. I hope you'll join me next time uh, as we talk more urban survival. But I, I hope this has helped you, uh, has sparked some ideas in you, and that you will comment on the video, that you will share the video, that you will like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, would be great. Uh, my name is David Fields and I appreciate you watching Field Skills.